Good morning, fifth graders. Today we are on page 220 of your student journal, and we are in unit 11, lesson five. We are going to be starting something a little bit new, but also continuing with what we've been doing. So at the beginning of this unit, we solved the multi-step length problems, and then we just finished solving multi-step weight problems, and today we're going to begin solving multi-step volume problems. So even though it's something new, there's a lot of repetition to what we've been doing. Okay, so our goal or our objective today is one of those long ones that we've been seeing. It is today I will solve multi-step word problems involving volume using the metric and standard systems. And you probably need to stop your video to get caught up in that long one. Okay, so everything we've seen here for the last four lessons except this volume. Here's our new word, volume. Now you've done volume this year when you were solving how much could fit inside of a rectangular prism and your, sh your formula for that was volume equals length times width times height. We are talking about a little bit different type of volume now. So we're not going to really be talking about rectangular prisms and where our answer is going to be cubed, we're going to be talking about more like liquid volume. Okay, so let's look at our vocabulary today. It says volume is the amount of space within a three-dimensional object, an attribute of a solid figure. So that is true. Um, what's going to be different is before we were talking about rectangular prisms with volume, now we're going to be talking about more like containers that hold liquids. And then we have our two different measurement systems. So for the US customary system, here are the units, measurement units we're going to be using. Eight fluid, fluid means liquid. So eight fluid ounces equals one cup. Two cups equal one pint. Two pints equal one quart and four quarts equal one gallon. Now, all of these measurements need to be inside your head. You need to have all of those memorized, which is a lot to memorize. They show you a little picture here. Some of you might have done this picture before in fourth grade. Um, I'm going to help you draw it and kind of tell you the story to it to help you. Um, but I, to the, to this day, even at my age, I need to use this picture to solve these problems. So, gallon ma man has four queens, each with two princesses, each with two cats. Okay, if you learn to memorize that and to draw this picture, you could will know so many measurements. From this picture, I could tell you that there's two cups in one pint. I could tell you there's two pints in one quart. I could tell you there's one, two, three, four cups in one quart. I could tell you that in half of a gallon, there's two quarts. I could tell you one gallon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pints, or one gallon has one, two, three, four quarts, or one gallon has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 cups in it. There's so much information that I can pull from this once I learn to draw it. Okay, for the metric system, however, our New base measurement is liter. 
So our base measurement for the metric system is liter. Other than that, there's not much new we need to memorize because we're just going to be continuing to use our same strategy. You might be starting to realize why the whole world likes the metric system versus our systems because they don't have a lot to have to memorize. We have lots of measurements to have to learn. Okay, our steps are going to be the same that we've been using. We're going to read the problem and make a plan. We're going to identify the units. Are they US or are they metric? Then we're going to create a conversion chart if it's US, but we're first going to draw our picture. So we're going to do a picture and a conversion chart for U.S. or if it's metric, we're going to use King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. And then we're going to refer to our conversion chart or our King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk to get the needed conversion and then solve. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in and get started, ladies and gentlemen, with my first problem. And it says... Fred is selling 7.5 gallons of sea salt at the farmer's market this Saturday. He will sell the salt in pint bags for $2.35 each. If he spent $27.89 on supplies, how much profit will Fred make if he sells all 7.5 gallons of sea salt? Okay, first thing I notice is I see the word gallons and pint, so I know we are doing the US system. So I am going to draw my gallon man with four queens and two pints, I'm sorry, two princesses each and each with two cats. I'm going to draw that picture right away so I can get started. Okay, then what do I see? Well, I can then make my conversion chart between gallons and pints. So gallons and pints. So I know from my picture that one gallon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pints in it, which means two gallons would have 16 pints which means three gallons would have 24 pints and four gallons would have 32 pints. Okay, so what I'm noticing here is what operation is happening is one times eight is eight, two times eight is 16, three times eight is 24, four times eight is 32. And the reason I want to look at that is because don't I really need to get all the way to 7.5 gallons? So I could use multiplication to help me figure that out. I could say 7.5 times 8 equals what? So I might come over here and solve that. Oh, not 7.8, sorry. Let me start that one over, ladies and gentlemen. 7.5 times 8, and what do I get? 8 times 0 is 40. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 4 is 60. So I'm saying 7.5 gallons has 60 pints. I also could have set, figured it out by looking at half of it and realizing there was 4 pints. So there's a few different ways I could have figured that out, but that's important to know because I don't want to have different measurements. So now I can cross this off and I can try and solve it together. So I have Fred is selling 60 pints of sea salt at the farmer's market this Saturday. He will be selling the sea salt in pint bags for $2.35 each. Okay. So that's, I'm gonna pause right there and solve that. So if he's going to sell them for $2.35 each, and he has 60 of them, let's figure out how much money he's going to make from each of them. Zero times five is zero, zero times three is zero, and zero times two is zero. 
Then I have a placeholder. Six times five is 30. Six times three is 18, plus three is 21. Six times two is 12, plus two is 14. So I am getting 141 dollars. 141 dollars. Okay, that's how much he's going to make at the farmer's market. Okay, let's read the rest of our question though. If he spent $27.89 on supplies, how much profit will he make if he sells everything? Well, this is how much he's going to get at the farmer's market, but we have to subtract what he spent to actually get his true profit. So let's see, zero take away nine is zero, impossible. So let's come over here and borrow. That becomes a 10, then it becomes a nine. 10 take away nine is one. Nine take away eight is one. Um, in subtraction, we line up our decimals and carry them down. Zero take away seven is impossible, so let's borrow. 10 take away seven is three. Three take away two is one. One take away nothing is one. So the profit that he made after he paid himself back for his supplies, we call this profit, would be $113.11. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to look at, wow, all the work that goes into these problems. I know that they have require quite a lot of work. Okay, let's turn the page. I'm gonna do another one for you. Antonio, Antonia had a two liter jug of pink soda. She drank 650 milliliters. Her sister and her friend will equally share the remaining soda. How much soda will each of them drink in milliliters? Okay, so what I notice first is the words liter and milliliters, and then I notice in my problem or question they say milliliters, which tells me I'm doing the metric system, which tells me I'm gonna use King, Henry, died by drinking chocolate milk, and my base measurement for volume is going to be liter. Okay, because they tell me in the, my answer they want it in milliliters, I'm gonna keep the milliliters and get rid of the liter. So I need to know two liters equals how many milliliters. Okay, so I'm gonna start at liter and go to milliliter. So I'm gonna start at liter and go to milliliter. So what did I do? One, two, three to the right. So I'm gonna move one, two, three to the right. And I'm getting 2,000 milliliters. Okay, so let's cross this off. And now that we have one measurement for the whole system, or whole problem, now we can solve it. So it first says, Antonio had 2,000 milliliter jug of pink soda. She drank 650 milliliters. Okay, well if she drank them, they disappeared or left, so that would be a subtraction problem. So zero take away zero is zero. Zero take away five is not possible, so let's borrow. We have to borrow all the way over. 10 take away five is five. Nine take away six is three. And one take away nothing is one. So that's how much is left. Okay, let's read the rest of our problem. Her sister and her friend will equally share the remaining soda. Okay, well her sister and her friend are two people so if two people are going to share this, I could divide that number by two to see what we get. So two cannot fit into one. Two can fit into 13 six times. Six times two is 12. Two cannot fit in, I'm sorry, two can fit into 15 seven times. Seven times two is 14. and two fits into zero 
zero times. Zero times two is zero. And remember, I had to do that because you have to have a number on top of everything in your dividend. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, did you catch my mistake? I'm gonna pause and see if you can catch my mistake because I just caught my mistake. Is 15 take away 14 zero or is 15 take away 14 one? Should that have been 10? I believe so. So two can fit into 10 five times. Wow. Five times two is 10, which then would have been zero. I am glad I caught that mistake. So they each would get 675 milliliters. That's how much each of her friend and her sister are going to get to drink, which is more than she got to drink. Okay, so again, notice all the effort and work that go into these problems. So I do realize they're a lot of work, but I also realize you can do it. All right, let's try two together. We're on page 221, I believe. And our first problem says, two pints of helium are enough to fill five party balloons. Helium is sold in a three gallon tank. How many balloons could Helen fill for the party? Okay, I see pints and gallons. So I know we are doing a US problem which means we need to do our picture. So gallon man has four queens, each with two princesses, each with two cats. Okay, now that we know that, now we, can change one of these because we can't have different measurements. So we can choose whichever one we want to change. Um, I'm going to do my conversion chart and my problem has to do with gallons and pints. So what does this tell us? One gallon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pints. Two gallons has 16 pints and three gallons has 24 pints. So could we cross that off and say 24 pints? Okay, so now let's read the problem and see if we can solve it. Two pints of helium are enough to fill five party balloons. Helium is sold in a 24 pint tank. How many balloons could Helen fill for the party? Hmm, I might do something that I, I like to sometimes do lists or tables. So I might say if she uses two pints, she's gonna get five balloons. If she uses four pints, she's gonna get 10 balloons. Six pints, she's gonna get 15 balloons. Eight pints, 20 balloons, because notice every two pints, she can get five more balloons. 10 pints, 25 balloons, 12 pints, 30 balloons. How is that going so far? We, we have to go all the way up to 24, which is quite a bit, right? But we could keep doing that. 14, balloon, 14 pints gets 35 balloons. 16 pints will get 40 balloons. 18 pints will get 45 balloons. 20 pints would get 50 balloons. 22 pints would get 55 balloons. And 24 pints would get 60.